Uh, hello, everyone. Um, here we are. I'm Abe. And uh, I am Alessandro. Uh, we are both users of OpenRNDR, this creative coding framework. Mm -hmm. What so, language is this? Uh, say it again. What language are we using? Uh, we are using Kotlin as a language. And uh, and yes, uh, we are both computational artists. I think this we can do. We are based in Berlin. And uh, Abe has been uh, like a long, longer in time user <laughs> of this uh, framework. And I was brought in not that recently. So this shows that anybody can jump in. And uh, yes, we were thinking of uh, uh, talking about uh, how parts of this language that we are using, that is Kotlin, affects as artistic practices somehow yeah. through yeah through for, render. yeah for some reason uh, i started like three years ago and i was I, it was an experiment i wanted to know uh, are there things in this language which or in this framework also which make my work different or better or easier or in some way different yeah and now i can say that it does and mm -hmm. one of the parts i like a lot is these the collections in kotlin mm -hmm. So we thought we could play a bit with that today. Exactly, and see somehow a bit, show a bit how we use it and how collections itself in, inspires us and you know suggests us artistic decision in uh, in a sense. Okay, right. so you will see some code, and uh, yeah. So, so what are we doing now? How do we start? Uh, we'll just start by cloning the. We are in IntelliJ. Open our and yeah, open our and their template. Mm -hmm. Template uh, yeah, this is IntelliJ idea, the community edition, which is open source and free. Mm -hmm. And I just cloned this basic project in uh ah, I think I already have <laughs> mm -hmm. the project, so it's cloned so fast. <laughs> Let me open that project. Mm -hmm. uh, there it is. All and, right. and in when once you clone the project, there's here a bunch of folders which are Mm, used by the build system, and we are interested in the files which inside source main Kotlin. And I will just open this template program, and I think I'm gonna just kind of delete everything. So just to see that it's working, we have a basic program. Mm -hmm. We can specify the size, and let's see how it works. And then we start from there. We should see a black screen. If everything, yeah, I think yeah, the black is the yes, default. Yes, the default. So yeah, there it is. Do you think we should use the live coding mode? Um, uh, I don't know. Maybe. The, so the, there are two template programs. Mm -hmm. This is the default one, mm -hmm. and the one that has the word live is like for live coding. Mm -hmm. And we can. I will run that. The only difference is this here has the term Olive program, like for mm. OpenR and the R live mm -hmm. program. So, so we don't need to stop and start the program every time. We just uh, save mm -hmm. and the changes are immediately visible. Immediately visible. Yes. So maybe I should increase the font size uh, if I remember how to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, font. <laughs> I double tap shift key because I never remember. Increase font size. Control Shift Plus. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So I to... think I mean I think I don't know if there's a need to show how one quickly defines a variable, but this is uh, I think pretty standard to get. Yeah. Um, I thought about starting just very simple, just to change the background color, so yes. so we can see that it's working. Yes. And you, I mean, if you're wondering what this uh, drawer is, this is basically the object that receives messages. Most of the graphic uh, somehow directives that we will use to uh, to draw things on mm -hmm. the screen, and these are more precisely parts of the Open Render uh, library, not strictly uh, Kotlin uh, native objects, but uh, mm -hmm. that's fine. And uh, yeah, we, uh, uh, let's draw a circle. Let's start with a single circle. We were saying we want to talk about collections. We have a, a single object. It's a collection of one object. <laughs> I mean, jokes aside, I mean, how do we draw a single circle? Um, uh, one thing you may notice here is that if you type numbers like this, it's a bit different from JavaScript mm -hmm. because it's expecting double numbers, mm -hmm. so you cannot use integ integers by default. Mm -hmm. But now, we, if I save this, we should have there a circle. Mm -hmm. 
exactly and um yeah so we can uh, I, th I think we can uh, we could animate this of course uh but i don't think that's at the moment something we may want to do uh so we said that our topic would be collections mm -hmm. okay so let's somehow start straight and uh how about we have a collection of uh, circles right so there's two ways of drawing circle. Mm -hmm. One is kind of this with the implicit values here. Mm -hmm. uh, but instead of that, I want to draw a circle that is an object. I would mm -hmm. call it, for example, sir, and I declared this before. Mm -hmm. So I will start first, like just changing a bit the program uh, to do the same, and then we make it a mm -hmm. collection. So this will be a circle, maybe with the same values as before. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I will change it a bit so we notice the change. Mm -hmm. So now if I saved, see now I'm not passing uh, here coordinates. Exactly. It's just a circle object. Yes, which is basically what uh, under the hood, the it's an overloaded function somehow under the hood. That's what was happening before. A circle with that property like uh, 100, 150, I guess, before had been created, but the the uh, circleness <laughs> in this world belonged to the object circle, and that's how you instantiate it and use it uh, to draw a circle. Mm -hmm. oh. And now the moment where we convert this into a list, which mm -hmm. is very simple. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say that this is now a list. Uh, uh, I want five of, five of these items. Mm -hmm. And so this is already done. That was mm -hmm. the whole required change here. Mm -hmm. But now uh, circle expects one circle. So mm -hmm. I only have to add an S because there's another method called circles mm -hmm. that accepts a collection. Mm -hmm. So now, well, <laughs> now we don't see any change because why? We don't see any change because uh, we have uh, copies of the same circles over and over. So basically uh, the same circle has been drawn over itself five times, so we don't see any change. Right. How can we introduce changes now and variations? So if you notice here, the ID is very cool that is showing us um, the names of the arguments. Mm -hmm. so you can see here, this is not part of the code. This is mm -hmm. X, Y, radius, and there is this it, like int. You can mm -hmm. consider it uh, in different ways. It can be the iterator or mm -hmm. the it as a as thing. the thing, <laughs> like as a the. This one. Yeah. So I can just make them a bit different, each one, just for example, by mm, multiplying the index number, mm -hmm. the it, which would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, mm -hmm. by 50. Maybe, I don't know if that's mm -hmm. too big. No, that's a good number. Mm -hmm. And so you will see that multiple uh, circles have appeared on screen. And the interesting, I mean, if you want, you can see everything inside uh, the curly bracket as a sort of a constructor for what is going to be filled in the list at the given spot. And then the iteration happens in the amount of, you know, uh, I'll say, how many times you specify. Uh, yes. Yeah. Exactly. And very easy to change the mm -hmm. amount, so we can okay. fill. Okay, so uh, now to illustrate a property of uh, these uh, lists, um, we have used at this moment uh, the, a, a new function, circles that accept lists, which is a very sort of a convenience mm -hmm. type of function that allows us to immediately draw a certain amount of circles. But how about we, how could we, how are the different ways in which we can uh, use the circle function as before to introduce iteration over a collection. Mm -hmm. what, what do you have in mind? So I have in mind, um, I have in mind possibilities. I mean, we learn from uh, coding kindergarten <laughs> that one of the most important thing after an if structure is a, a loop for loop structure so uh, one can have multiple approaches at iterated iterating over uh, lists in particularly kotlin has also a very somehow functional oriented mm -hmm. approach uh, to lists where you can iterate over them via a for each okay. method yeah and we could uh, use that instead of using these uh, mm -hmm. because i mean Life this time is easy. I mean, it has over <laughs> overloaded functions, but this yeah. doesn't happen with all type of uh, collections right. we want to use, right? So maybe the problem we would be trying to solve is how can we give them different colors? 
Yes, exactly. Yes, exactly. How can we give uh, different colors? In yes. that case, we cannot use this approach as mm -hmm. we did here, but we can go through all of the circles mm -hmm. with the for each method that Alessandro was mentioning. Mm -hmm. And you can see now that the it inside mm -hmm. here is a circle. Mm -hmm. So we could um, then draw the circle, just one of them, it. So drawer, circle, it. So far, nothing is going to change. Then we would add here a line to change the colors. Mm -hmm. But for now, we run it and we see that, that nothing changes. Yeah, nothing changes. Hopefully. <laughs> Maybe just to make sure we change yeah. the number. So it's working. We just have a different approach now. We iterate mm -hmm. through the circles mm -hmm. and we draw them. Mm -hmm. So notice that, I mean, uh, at this moment, the we are using a for each method. And conceptually, we have these. Uh, it, this object somehow with this entity itself, which is a circle that reacts to a given, uh, I don't want to say command, but to a given suggestion that we give the, the object, which is uh, for each and allows us also to have a very elegant approach to iteration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to rename this because I'm not convinced. I will we'll call it call for mm -hmm. collection because mm -hmm. it's no longer one circle mm -hmm. to make it a bit more correct. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to change the colors. Mm -hmm. um, I will maybe randomize. It's go there's going to be a bit of flicker, but I will limit it so it's not too extreme. Mm -hmm. So fill, and what could we do? Or we can, yeah, if we use randomness, uh, let me see, RGB, mm -hmm. for example, and random, double, zero, no, double. Mm -hmm. And I will put two colors, two values. I which don't are... think I've ever used the RGB function no, until now. No. It's a shorthand. It's a shorthand, okay. Uh, if I hit, you see it's red. If I hit Alt, Enter with the cursor mm -hmm. here, it will import the function. Yeah, okay. So it's um, a... safe. And now there yes, are... the, there is a very light flicker. Yeah, I didn't want to make it too annoying. Yeah, yeah makes sense, <laughs> makes sense. But instead of uh, randomness, uh, mm -hmm. even to. Instead of this flicker, uh, we could give them a color based on the index. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we expect them to be whiter and whiter as long as the index go on. For example. Yeah. For yeah. example. Okay. Cool. And a naive approach might be we could add a variable mm -hmm. to count the current position and then here do we plus exactly. Plus. But what, what, what else can we do? So we can do, um, I mean, collections are very somehow developed in Kotlin. So this type of things, most probably you can do with a for each indexed right. approach. And that's why it's so good because you don't have to have this extra step of creating a counter and, you know, mm -hmm. updating and so on and so forth. So now what does this, uh, now the it has disappeared. Right. So this, we have to know, it's not telling us here directly. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing is, before, there was only one argument passed here, which was mm -hmm. the current element. Mm -hmm. But now we have two. Mm -hmm. I can call it whatever I want. For yes. example, E for index. Yeah. And maybe oh, yeah, let's call it sir or P or whatever. Yeah. This could be a circle yeah. with object. So if I save now, still works the same way. But now we have access to this index. Mm -hmm. So I could say here in i divided by a number, mm -hmm. for example, it would be 30.0, mm -hmm. then they are all very dark. Mm -hmm. Maybe ideally it should be similar to the length of the list. Mm -hmm. So, so to I, go to 0 to 1, basically, that's the idea. Right. Okay. Actually, the actual number would be 11 yeah. if mm -hmm. I want from pure black to, to pure, pure white, mm -hmm. because we are counting from 0 mm -hmm. to 11. But and uh, how about we eliminate the the contour of the circle? Like right. we make it the contour of the circle. Drawer stroke, mm -hmm. and the, here you make it null, mm -hmm. so then it will disappear. Exactly. And I uh, wanted to show that to make it a bit more flexible because if now I change here the number, yeah. and I say twenty. Yes. Then it no longer yeah. goes to now. Is the remaining ones are pure white. Mm -hmm. because it's above 1.0. Mm -hmm. So we can make a variable maybe and keep uh, track of that, or uh, you want to point to the list length? Yeah. Okay, uh, cool. So we don't have to declare the variable. We could just yeah. say call dot size. Yes. And the issue with this is, you can say it's complaining because it expects, expects a 
a flow, a double. So you have to multiply by either cast as a float yeah. or multiply by 1.0. Like hacky approach. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> multiply by 1.0. Yes. And, uh, uh, and why is it so dark? I think it's because we are going too far out of the screen. Uh, and, but the proper way would no, be... No, I think that uh, you maybe you're missing a bracket. You want to ah. divide by call size. Uh, right. Yeah. yeah uh, you want to multiply by one point. Right. Yes, exactly. Uh, the order matters. Yes, so, exactly. Otherwise, you, you see what's happening. If this is an integer and this mm -hmm. is an integer. Mm -hmm. And so any number below size is going to return zero. Mm -hmm. Because it's an integer, integer division, yeah. basically. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But if I do this, okay. then I'm first converting this to a double. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then this is solved. Yeah. And maybe a more clear option is called to double. Yeah. That's probably the the that's, safest. That's what they uh, will teach you but, in school. <laughs> yeah. So basically, uh, somehow, almost instantly, we have we are dealing with um, deciding to deal with the collections as their uh, as basically let me say basic entities of what we are uh, dealing with. We are already dealing with the scalability in a certain sense. We can see that the twenty in the list. It's an index that we can move and everything will, you know, the way the, the program has been written, everything will uh, follow. And mm -hmm. sometimes strange things happen when you add uh, many <laughs> objects, in particular, if you give each of them a part, uh, vari enough variation, mm -hmm. you can have these things, you know, that it is very similar to when uh, uh, Sonic events, many, many of them very, very, very close, they start to produce a pitch, yeah. okay, and they become from uh, individual events to a pitch, and sometimes I think of uh, um, collection as a gateway for me mm. to pass, you know, from uh, and from blending the individual forms, and when you have many, many, many of them, you almost forget the, yes. you cannot individuate the original form. That reminds me of, like, pointy logicians. Exactly, or, that's, the, like, that's the same idea, yeah. yeah. When and, you, um, uh, of course, in one of those paintings, one single stroke is just a little dot, but when you mm -hmm. have a Many, thousand of them, then... Exactly, you exactly. Have... And these, I, I think, uh, affects the things I do a lot. Like this, you know, passage from the small to the big in terms of numbers, and it's something that I try to exploit, mm -hmm. uh, exploit a lot. Okay, yeah. let's see also, let's try also to, to do something else. Suppose uh, uh, I would like to have uh, where the circles are, mm -hmm. I would like to have uh, smaller rectangles at the center of the circle. So both, circle and exactly. rectangle. Exactly, so how can I transform a, a collection to obtain another collection. Okay. What, what can we do? So first of all, the circles are very, a circle in open render, it's a geometric, it has a lot of geometry in itself. It knows its position, it mm -hmm. knows many things, but how can we transform now a collection? Um, what can we do? So there's many things, the thing I have in mind, because yeah, the collections in Kotlin have a lot of useful methods. Mm -hmm. I, we can just throw in, before showing a, a mm -hmm. few examples. For example, you can filter. Yes. You can, yes. From a collection, you can take just some of the elements. Yes, you exactly. Can reverse the list. Yes. You can take yes. a sub list. And you can do pop the first element, pop yeah. the last element, all these type of uh, things. Mm -hmm. But these are not what I had in mind. Right. You wanted to convert at least. In another list. Yes, from a list to transform and to an, to sort of map it mm -hmm. to another list. So I have this method that is map. So it allows me to iterate through. It passes the objects, mm -hmm. but then I can transform it and I can use property of that object mm -hmm. to attach to another, uh, you know, geometry or whatever yeah. I feel like. Okay. Should, because this video is getting a bit long, okay. should we pause here and we continue immediately with map? Yes, yes. So this was a very brief then introduction to collections, mm -hmm. and we can explore what we can do with map. Great. See you in the next one.